Okay, so good morning and welcome everybody. Welcome to session five, Ask a Student of our Table Talk series. Before we begin, I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. Canada College is located in the Robinson-Huron Treaty Territory and the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Nabising Anishinaabeg. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the Indigenous peoples of all the lands we're on today. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands which we all call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people that call this land home. So Canada is excited to welcome you to our final Table Talk session. Today's session, Ask a Student, is a, uh, the fifth session, and our panel of experts consists of staff members and students today. Uh, across various uh, different departments. This session, we are shifting our focus um, so that you can get the opportunity to hear from real live students and, uh, and potentially ask your own questions as well. So just a reminder, that the information provided in these sessions are for students who will be attending the College Drive, Commerce Court, Aviation, or West Perry Sound Campus. With that in mind, we're just gonna open uh, with a poll. So just give me one quick second here to launch the poll and go ahead and answer away. Okay, so we had 92% uh, participation rate. So I'm gonna end the poll. And so you're probably seeing the answers in front of you. So the first question is there's snow where you are. 18% uh, I should say said yes, lots of snow. 8% said a little bit of snow, but mostly rain. And 74% said no snow, it's gonna be a green Christmas. Oh boy. Well, uh, here in North Bay, we've actually had some rain recently too. So even though we did have some snow, unfortunately we've lost a lot of it now. So hopefully we're not gonna have a green Christmas, but we'll see. Uh, question number two, is this your first table talk session? So 21% said yes, and as whopping 79% said no. So that's great. Thank you so much for joining us on all of these. Uh, they're intended to be very informative and for your benefit. And so that's great to see that so many of you have been joining us for multiple sessions. And the third question, what campus are you going to be attending in January? Um, so it looks like the vast majority is College Drive, which does make sense. It is the largest of our campuses. So 69% will be at College Drive, 28% will be at Commerce Court, and 3% will be at Aviation, uh, and none will be at Perry Sound. So that's uh, it's an awesome result. And here I've just shared the, those results for you to take a look at, and I will close that poll. So with that in mind, with that uh, poll done, we'll just do a quick overview of our session. So today's panel consists of Samantha St. Pierre, as well as Noah Landry. And I'm just trying to see if we've got doesn't look like we've got uh, the other staff here. So that's quite all right. Uh, so Sam and Noah are great representatives. They're part of the CSC student government. And so they will be a wonderful resource for everybody on this call. We also have some staff from Student Success Services to provide some additional insight into support and services that are available for our students in order to assist you in being the best student that you can be. If you do have questions regarding other departments or services and you missed our other Table Talk sessions, you can check out the orientation videos or re-watch any of the previous sessions. These are both available on the Candor Orientation website as well as YouTube. 
Due to the high number of attendees, we are using the Q&A uh, feature for all of you to attend or for all of you to submit your questions. So once your question has been answered, it will be displayed for all attendees to see. If you don't want to share your name, you can choose to ask the question anonymously. Please just make sure to keep your questions appropriate and use respectful language. Finally, the fun part of this is that there are prizes available. So the additional bonus to all this wonderful information that you're receiving today is that your name will also be entered into a draw for an Apple Watch. So the more sessions you attend, the more information you'll receive, as it sounds, we have had a lot of multiple attendees have been going to many of these sessions. And so the more chances you have to win the prize. So we have compiled a list of the top 10 questions that students want to ask other students. So our student panel will answer these questions first, and then any additional questions that have been submitted through the Q&A, we will answer uh, as we can um, as quickly as possible. So I'll just have our students introduce themselves. So first of all, we have Samantha, if you want to introduce yourself with your name, the year and program that you're in, and what you think the best part of Canada has been so far. So as Daryl said, my name is Sam. Um, I am a third year Canador student. I graduated from SSW last year and I'm doing an intensive version of the mental health and addictions program. Um, and I think my favorite part about Canador so far has been the support that I've had from staff and the connections I've been able to make with the students in my classes. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Sam and Noah. Hi, I'm Noah Landry. I'm uh, Vice President of Student Life uh, on uh, CSC. Um, I'm in my second year. I'm in uh, Electrical Techniques, which is a trades program for budding electricians. Um, I would have to say my favorite part of Canada so far was when I worked for uh, uh, Sport and Wellness, developing esports programming. That was a fun, a, amazing experience and it's a passion of mine so um very enjoyable very cool that's awesome yeah so for those that may not know we've just introduced esports both on a varsity and eventually in an intramural uh, basis so if that's something you're interested in it's definitely something to get involved in early in your uh, in your candidate or career and one of the things too to keep in mind is we do offer uh, full gym services so if you're looking for gym uh, classes workout classes just exercising on your own uh, we offer that at every campus, so uh, it's nice to just be aware that it does exist. And if you do have any questions, uh, you'll certainly be introduced to um, those facilities early on. So with that in mind, we will go to the question and answer, which is the uh, 10 questions that we've already kind of figured out as the top 10. So I'll start with the first one. Um, and we may have already kind of gotten a glimpse into this, but the question being, why did you choose Canada College? And we'll do the same order uh, as we did earlier. So Samantha. Why did you choose Canada College? Um, so I heard that it was, so for my program, I wanted to do SSW when I first came to Canada. Um, and I heard a lot of good feedback about it. And my dad also graduated from Canada a couple years earlier. He decided to go back to school. So it was just kind of a connection there. And I'm also living in North Bay. So I was able to stay living with my parents and save money. Nice. Yeah. All logical things. That's, that's awesome. Uh, and Noah? Uh, for me, it's pretty well the same. I grew up in North Bay, um, so it was easy for me to stay at home and save money that way. But uh, I also know that Canada has some amazing uh, trades programs. So um, when I decided to switch over to a trades program, I adopted the state Canada and very happy about that decision. That's awesome. No, that's great. Uh, just from a uh, liaison perspective, I'll just add to that to just say North Bay is a very welcoming community. It's a small city. So if, as a community of roughly 50,000 people, um, the locals understand the economic contribution that our students make to that, uh, our society, but at the same time provides that small, um, small experience. So you're not going to feel overwhelmed coming to Canada, which is the positive there. Uh, and you get the small class sizes and a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professors. So that's that's a, a really good benefit of Canada. And obviously everybody on the call has already made that choice, um, but that's just something I wanted to make mention of because I think it's a big win. So the second question is how much time do you spend outside of class working on assignments? So not in class time, just outside of class, but still working on your class um, projects and papers or what have you. Um, Samantha, I'll turn it to you first. 
Um, so one thing to remember is it depends on the program that you're in. Um, for me personally, it depends on how much um, effort you feel like putting into your assignments because some things can be done pretty quickly, but you're not going to get the greatest grades on them. So regularly, I'll put about 10 to 15 hours, depending on the assignments that I have due or coming up. Awesome. And Noah? I have uh, substantially less uh, like homework time that I have to do uh, just because I'm in a trades program and a lot of my stuff is hands-on learning. So there's not a lot of homework for that. Um, I do have two classes that are like theory classes uh, that I regularly have homework for. Um, I'd probably say like eight hours a week, maybe um, of time that I have to spend on my studies outside of the classroom. Awesome. Yeah. So just like what you guys said earlier and Sam said earlier, it does depend on the class. It, it is very um, dependent on that. So, um, you know, if you're in a trade based program, you're typically going to be doing and I don't uh, stop me know if I'm saying anything out of line, but um, you're going to be doing most of your work in the labs, getting that hands on experience. So it just it makes sense then that you want to have as much uh, take home work. And um, so it's it's uh, logical that way. So third question, our textbook expensive. And is it better to buy new or used? I guess I'll go. <laughs> sure. um, so I think most students can agree that textbooks are very expensive. Um, but just a couple of tips and options for you. You can order books on Amazon. We have the campus shop that we can use um, that's on campus. Um, and then you can also buy textbooks from friends or previous students. We have a student page, like a textbook trading page on Facebook. Um, and then the other thing is I would suggest to wait until your professors say that you need your textbook until buying your textbook, because I know my first year, I was super excited about my program and I was like, okay, I'm going to buy every single textbook and I ended up using like one. Um, so that was like $400 that I could have used on food or something else. Very good points. Noah? Yeah, for me, it's pretty well the same answer. Um, just reiterating to wait until your professors tell you you need it. Um, a lot of professors right now are trying to cut down on uh, the costs for students. So if they don't need you to get the textbook uh, for the cor course content, they won't make you get it. Um, like for example, my first semester, there was um, around a thousand dollars of textbooks that I was supposed to get. And then after talking to my teachers, I only spent about $200 on textbooks for, for this semester. So buy used if you can, um, just make sure that you're paying attention to things like if there's a workbook with your with your textbook, because um, there, if there is a workbook, then you might not be able to use it if it's used. Um, but yeah, I, I bought my $200 textbook used for $50 and it was still in the packaging. So yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. So uh, one thing I'll just add to those answers as a previous student, um, maybe a, a old previous student. But what I always found was that professors will list, as Sam was saying, a lot of textbooks and some of them are necessary and some of them aren't. So as Noah was kind of alluding to, uh, pay attention obviously to if it's used, but also pay attention to the uh, edition that they're asking for. The other thing that I find happens a lot is that students will want to buy the books to get a head start on their reading, but that is not really something I would suggest because really if you start reading the introduction to a, a textbook and then only take the class months later, you're not really gonna remember the content. And so you, the whole reason that our classes are designed the way they are is to be optimal for your learning. So just be aware of that. Usually there's some people that really wanna get started, um, but just be sure to, to hold, your, hold on a little bit until you're reading those uh, sections or whatever uh, when the professor is asking you to because it's designed that way on purpose. Okay, so the next question is, how is the food on campus and where are the best places to eat off campus? So Noah, I'm gonna get you to answer that first this time. For sure. Um, I think the food on campus is pretty good. Every uh, different campus, at least in North Bay, uh, has different options. Um, so like the College Drive campus has like Pizza Pizza Subway and then 
It has, uh, I think it's the Grill Company. Is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah. The grill or something um, like that. And that's like burgers, fries, chicken fingers, sandwiches, stuff like that. Breakfast. And then, uh, yeah, breakfast as well. Um, and then there's also uh, like a weekly menu that changes day to day. Um, that there's It's kind of like specials. Um, so like Friday, for example, is my favorite day because it's always fish and chips. Um, as for off campus, um, I'm a big wing guy. So Wacky Wings um, and the Moose downtown has great wings and great other food if you don't like wings. Um, I don't know, Sam, anything else? Um, yeah, so I don't, I feel like I might be remembering this wrong, but I'm pretty sure like the calf has their set menu, but when there's holidays coming up, they'll have like foods that go with that holiday available. Like I know Thanksgiving, they'll have like a little Thanksgiving thing. Um, and I think there's a couple of other international holidays that they kind of bring in as well. Um, but if any of you have never had poutine, you need to try it when you get here. And Ivan's is the place to go. Um, you need to have the right experience. So you need to go to Ivan's. That's my main point. But yeah, Wacky Wings is a really good option. Um, we have Boston Pizza. We have East Side Mario's. Um, we have a couple of other smaller places. Really good place to get breakfast mm. is Sills um, or Colonel, not Colonel Hogan's. They're closed down right now, but um, Burger World. Some, yep, good answers. Uh, I'll, I'll add a little bit. There is a bit of um, international food. So we do have a uh, Mexican restaurant locally. We do have a Taco Bell, Swiss Chalet, Montana's, uh, lots of Tim Hortons. So we actually have a, a, a different uh, experience at our College Drive campus. They just opened a Twigs, which is a locally owned coffee shop. So as somebody that drinks coffee uh, way too often, then it's a bit of a, uh, uh, what's the word? <laughs> That's not the right word. Uh, crutch for me. Uh, so I spend a lot of money and time at, at Twigs. And we do have a Starbucks uh, for those that love Starbucks. So um, certainly there's the opportunity just to go back another step to the uh, cafeteria services. As Noah was saying, it is different at each location. Uh, what's different about Canada is you don't have to buy a meal plan, which is nice. Uh, you can certainly buy what they call a swipe and save plan. So you just have to put a minimum of $200 on your student card, and that'll at least allow you to to, you know, grab a coffee at Tim Hortons or, or whatever. Just be aware that the twigs on campus is a completely separate animal. So it's not covered on the, uh, on the uh, meal plans. However, you also, if you're staying in residence, have access to a full kitchen uh, in your residence uh, suite. So that's another option too. So that can help you save money as well. So that's enough of me. Let's go to the next question here. So is there anything you learned about the school only after you started classes that you wish you would have known before starting? Well, I'm sure there's a few things. Uh, Noah, I'll have you go first. Uh, this is a difficult one. Uh, for me, my first year when I started, uh, I didn't know, I feel like till like a month before that my, my classes would be completely online. I would have no in-person stuff. Um, that was frustrating just because I expected to have in-person classes but it is what it is um I'm not sure I feel like uh I didn't know a lot about um the on-campus like food uh like little restaurants almost um so when I first started doing in-person classes uh this September um I felt like I really didn't know anything about it so I'd you know be hungry at school because you know, I didn't grab lunch on my way out. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Makes sense. Sam, anything you would identify? Um, yeah, so I think the biggest thing is resources that are available to students because we have like a ridiculous amount of resources and I feel like I um, didn't really know about them. Like we have student success services that offers counseling to students, they help with academic plans. Um, we have access and inclusion. I don't know if Erin wants to talk on that at all. Um, we have the Center for Career Development, they'll help you make resumes. And that's something that's available to Canada students even after you graduate. So you can come back and ask for help if you want it. Um, and then I'm trying to think of something else. But I can't think of anything right now. It might come to me after I had something I wanted to say, but now it's gone. 
Well, maybe I'll, I'll fill in a couple blanks there too. So yes, the Center for Career Development is a great resource for our students. It's a full service job board after you graduated and there's postings from all over the country. So definitely keep that in mind. One thing I forgot to mention about food services, we also have our own restaurant that students run. It's not open every day, but I don't know how I forgot to mention it. So it's called The 100 Elements. It's the top rated uh, restaurant in North Bay on TripAdvisor and it, I see why I've eaten there before, it's amazing. Um, so nights that they're open or doing uh, curbside pickup is a great way to um, to uh, taste some of their their uh, food that they're serving uh, as well. So other offices, yeah, Student Success Services is the uh, absolute focus. And so if you need to speak to anybody at any time, please don't hesitate. Uh, your mental health is important to us as well as your academic health. And so we offer the mental health side. We also offer the academic health side. So if you think you might need some help with any kind of um, academia, uh, assistance, whether that's peer tutoring, whether it's note taking, whatever, it's there for you. So um, just be aware of that. And um, yeah, so I'll leave it at, at that. But yes, thank you, Sam, for mentioning that. And so we will go to the next question. Sorry. Oh. I just wanted to add one more thing. I remembered yeah. what I wanted to say. Sure. Um, so I'm correct that this is for January intake students, right? Yep. Okay, so um, for student council um, stuff, we are planning on hosting some webinars from people around the city. So dietitians to help you make healthier food choices. Um, we're thinking of bringing in some financial support. So kind of stuff that you need to know to be an adult when you're living on your own that I feel like a lot of people aren't really prepared for. So just keep an eye out for that. We're planning on kind of bringing some information there. And we'll probably get Aaron to help us with some couponing. Learn about that, but yeah. Well, why don't we get Aaron to, to speak, if, if you don't mind, Aaron, about your office and a little bit of that, the services that are provided. Perfect. Can everybody can see me okay? I was having issues with my camera this morning. Um, so good evening, not even good evening. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Aaron from Access and Inclusion. So thanks for joining us. You're going to see me on campus. I do lots of work with CSC and various departments. So I'm here to support students like everybody else that uh, that you've likely met if you've been part of the other table talk sessions. Um, essentially, I'm here to support you. So I help connect you with appropriate services both on and off campus, work to identify and navigate barriers and challenges that may arise because let's face it, there's always things that are going to come up, little hiccups and bumps along your travels. Um, so connect with myself or student success or really anybody on campus. We're all here to support you. Um, I, facilitate, I help facilitate campus celebrations. I assist with the Pride Club. Um, so if anybody's interested in joining clubs and whatnot, um, we can definitely get some of those up and running, have some fun while you're in school. I promote different events and awareness days. I help with bursary and scholarship workshops. Um, for those of you that are gonna be starting in January, um, bursaries and scholarships have already passed. Um, but there's going to be entrance awards. So I'll make sure to put that in the link. So if you're going to be coming in the fall, um, entrance awards, I know they open in May and they close sometime in August. So those are things that you should definitely watch out for. And then if you're coming in the fall, um, bursaries are open October 1st to the 31st. Scholarships open sometime November, I think it's mid-November to like mid-December. So those are all things that I can assist with as well as financial aid. Um, preferred name changes. So if you know maybe you're you're transitioning um, and you you have a preferred different preferred name, um, you can definitely connect with me and and I'll I'll get all that um, organized for you and uh, ensure that you know your preferred name is reflected on your student card as well as your learning platforms and your D2L, so you don't have to worry about you know a student seeing maybe your dead name. Um, we'll get that all changed up for you ahead of time. So just make sure to connect with me. Um, First generation student. So if your parent or guardian has not went to college or university, you'd be considered first gen. So there's different bursaries you can apply for. Um, you can come through me and get tutoring for free. I'll run different workshops and whatnot to assist. Um, and I also send out monthly newsletters to anybody that's registered with Access and Inclusion. So it's it could be like tips and tricks, um, different workshops that are coming up, different activities, um, anything that's going to be beneficial um, in terms of student assistance. So yeah, again, in a nutshell, Access and Inclusion is all about equity, diversity, and inclusion. So if you don't know where to start, 
uh, connect with me. I'm here to help. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron, very much. Um, so we're going to move on to the next question. So we'll start with Sam. Um, Sam, how have you found some of your course instructors in terms of dealing with them? Um, I, <clears throat> sorry, um, I think for my program, I'm very lucky because I'm in a space where it's very like, we care about mental health. That's kind of their jobs outside of teaching. So I'm very lucky that I have a lot of support with my professors. Um, just in general, emails I find are answered pretty quickly. Um, all of my prof professors are really easy to get along with. I'm sure that in most cases, like there's gonna be a professor that you're not gonna get along with. Um, so I feel like best advice there is to just kind of, if you need to keep your head down, um, make sure you're asking questions. And if there is an issue with your professor that you're feeling uncomfortable in your class and you're not wanting to go anymore, that you reach out to student success services or admissions or someone in the college and just make sure that you're finding that support there. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, one thing I would say too, as a liaison officer for the school, I deal with a lot of the faculty and, and uh, discuss with them a lot of uh, different parts. So whether that's doing a tour and introducing a, a prospective student to uh, some faculty members before they've even become a student. Uh, my experience has been that they are very accommodating and they want to get to know you. Um, but you have to remember as a student too, that it's a professional relationship, right? So uh, even though things could be frustrating and, and there is resources for you if, if things do go ar um, amiss kind of thing, um, but just remember that this is the start of your career, really. You know, let's say you're, whatever program you're in, this is really the, the first relationships. And that's what makes it a really beneficial relationship because our classes are small and so you get that one-on-one -on -one time. So, you know, if something's frustrating, go speak to your professor or faculty member and uh, and have that conversation, certainly, but just remember to do so in a professional way. That's the one thing that I would say. So I'm going to open it up to a different question. This, is a, this isn't on the top 10 list, but I don't want to forget about it. So I'm just going to open up to all panelists, whether you're staff or a student, about favorite places in North Bay. So maybe I'll start just because I'm already speaking. So for me, my favorite places in North Bay have to be the outdoor spaces, hands down. Um, so we have the uh, wonderful opportunity to be swimming uh, during the summer months in three major lakes, along with a ton of little tiny lakes all over the place. If you haven't been or know North Bay at all, it's basically like a, a Muskoka, just a little bit north of Muskoka. And in some ways, to me, it's better than Muskoka because you don't have this huge amount of people traveling there. So whether that's swimming in the summer, whether it's taking advantage of camping, um, doing some hiking right on our 12 kilometers of hiking trails right on our College Drive campus. And there's a lot of uh, local hiking trails in North Bay. That's what I would say. We also have a ski hill in the winter. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, I would certainly say um, take advantage of that because it's an outdoor kind of oasis here. Um, so I'll open up to other staff members. So why don't we start with staff and leave Sam and Noah to, to think about it for a second since we've been hearing a lot from them. So why don't we start with... Uh, if Trish is still on the call, Trish, is there anywhere you would identify? Yeah, um, so I've got, I actually have a list on my fridge of all like, the, the things to do in North Bay, just because um, I've got kids too. So if you are coming and you do have kids, there's a lot of great um, activities to bring them. Uh, the waterfront has, they've got a splash pad, they've got a carousel and a train for the summer months. Um, which are wonderful. I still go on them, even though I'm, I'm not going to say how old I am. Um, but there's Memorial Park, there's Kinsman Beach, um, so many great outdoor spaces. Uh, Daryl mentioned the Canada Trails, but there's also Laurier Woods. Um, there's the Cape Pace Walkway. Um, and then also, if you do have kids that you're looking to take them somewhere where it's cold or really hot in the summer, Northern Tykes has a great indoor playground that uh, um, it's big enough that uh, you could actually go up there if you do want to. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's kind of everything. You already mentioned the ski hill. And if you like sliding or um, sledding or tobogganing, um, Thompson Park and Lee Park have, once we get a little bit more snow, they've got some great hills that you can go sliding on. And there's, I think, five outdoor rinks that are going to be opening in the winter when it gets a little bit um, colder out and then also Lee Park has a skate trail that uh, um, you don't have to just go in a circle you can go on a windy path. I think that's those are all the places I can think of off the top of my head. 
Awesome. Well, thanks, Trish. Uh, Aaron, anything you'd identify? Trying to find my unmute button here. Um, the Chief Commander. So I'll post it in the link. Um, Chief Commander is fun. If you are 19 years of age, um, the boat's super cool place too. That's a happening place for young people. So that's also located at the waterfront. Super fun. Um, nice place to go hang out, you know, evenings, weekends, whatever. Your nighttime entertainment, I guess you could say. Um, Laurentian Ski Hill. I'm going to go with Trish on that one. Super fun. Um, there's lots of things you can do for free, which is nice. Like our waterfront, as Trish mentioned, beautiful, lots of hiking trails, snowshoeing. You can rent, not rent, you can sign out snowshoes on campus and go through the trails here, which is super cool. Um, trying to think what else. Off the top of my head, I, uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think Trish That's nailed them all. That's yeah. okay. I may, I forgot about one. Uh, we do have an OHL hockey team here in uh, North Bay. So uh, that's kind of a fun thing to go to as well when uh, when they're playing. It's uh, it's a different experience, certainly. Um, I'm going to open it up. Uh, how about Yen? Uh, is there any activities that you would identify in North Bay? Um, for me, because I live off campus, um, and then I rented a place that we can. Ha I have access to the beach through the backyard. Um, so I would recommend if you um, if you don't stay on campus, try to find a place that's close to the beach that you can walk to. Um, it's really relaxing and it's a public uh, beach. So you can just go there, it's just zero cost. You just go there and enjoy the beach with your friends during the summer. Um, this is my first winter in North Bay, so I don't, I'm not sure about um, more activities yet. Um, but I would love to try like skiing or snowboarding. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, we do have a lot of winter activities as well as we do get a lot of snow. Uh, so fair warning to those of you that may not be aware of that. Um, Laura, anything you would identify? Uh, I think most have been already said. I live on Ski Club Road, so I live right down the, down the street from the ski hill. So if you do get a chance, many of our international students, of course, have never had winter, so they've never had... Um, had, uh, had a chance to ski. Um, our sport and wellness uh, group have done um, trips to the ski hill. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID this year. That might not work out too well in terms, but you're all, you're welcome to go. And uh, I think you can um, rent skis. There's also cross country ski trails. If you like cross country skiing, it's a bit out of the city, but the, the Nordic club. Um, and just a reminder, we have a great library um, up at the college or at the education center campus. But we also have a really good library downtown um, and they do have other activities um, for the activities going on, especially if you're here with kids. Um, they, they do have uh, stuff going on down there. So there's lots of stuff and there's lots of staff so around that are um, that can are helpful. So if you're looking for something in particular, um, if you like pickleball or those kinds of things, badminton. Um, <clears throat> even if we're not offering, um, oh, I see there's a question just came up about a soccer team. Um, we, we are not running soccer. I don't believe this second semester, but if you touch base with the sport and wellness group, um, they should be able to let you know, um, whether there's soccer, but there is a badminton group in the city that have, uh, rented space and, um, and they'll be, uh, I think they'll be starting up again. So there's lots of stuff just ask. Laura, it's funny you mentioned the badminton because I literally just emailed him last night and he got back to me this morning and uh, yeah, it couldn't be a better time, but lots of events. Yeah. We do have a YMCA as well locally. The other thing I yeah. just wanted to mention really quickly too, for those that are on the call, is that uh, North Bay has become a bit of a film hub uh, and that might sound odd for a 50,000 person city, but uh, if you're here, you'll see we're a beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, we're basically a built around Lake Nipissing uh, with Trout Lake uh, very nearby uh, and in the city as well. So uh, it provides a wonderful kind of um, um, picture frame, so to speak, for a lot of different movies. And actually the library here on campus at the College Drive campus uh, was, uh, yes, home of the Hallmark movies, that's right, uh, was used actually for a movie. So I'll never forget as a liaison officer traveling to a school and then being exhausted, getting to my hotel room, turning the television on, and it taking me an inordinate amount of time to realize that it was Brooke Shields when they filmed the Christmas movie in the library here on campus. I went, you dummy. 
<laughs> it's Brooke Shields. Um, so yeah, that's, but that's me. I do that all the time. Um, Kathy, anything you would identify? Uh, yeah, actually, I was I was thinking of the snowshoes that can be borrowed from the college, but um, I was just thinking there's a small museum, the Discovery Museum, kind of between downtown and, and the waterfront. And I think right now they have like a world Guinness Book of World Records display or something going on. Yep, so you can check that out periodically and see what they have going on there, too. That's awesome. Yes, they sure do. I was actually just chatting about that exhibit and I saw it actually advertised, which was pretty cool. Uh, and Hins, would you want to identify anything? Um, well, sure. I um, I would like to say, well, in this session, we have a lot of international students. I would like to say if you choose to study at Canada and especially in Canada, North Bay is a good place for you to have the real Canadian culture. Um, that it's not just the nature, but also it's the culture in North Bay. People are kind of nice, uh, pretty nice right here. And you have the, uh, all the nature resources that you like to experience in Canada. It's a good place to go. Good choice. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great point. And I'll just mention too, we were talking about skiing and uh, downhill skiing. I mean, there is also another ski hill about 40 minutes away in a small community called Mattawa, right to the west, uh, east, I should say, of us. Jeez, I got that backwards. Uh, and it's a great hill, actually. It's uh, it's funny. I've gone to some of the larger, uh, like Blue Mountain here in Ontario is one of the main ones. Um, I actually liked the uh, Mount Antoine better. So if you're a big skier, I mean, I'm not, I fall every time I get going too quickly and then I have to bail and I do so in a very hilarious fashion, but I, I like that hill as well. Now let's get back to our students. Was there anything that you guys would identify in North Bay? I was creating a whole list while all of you were talking. <laughs> um, so like someone said, you can do ice fishing, which is really fun. And during the winter, um, on I think it's like Nipissing there's ice sculptures that people make and there's sometimes like art installations which are really fun to visit um, there's a place called gym tricks and that's a gymnastics gym um, and they have open gym for adults on Tuesday nights for an hour so if you're someone that likes doing flips and tricks that's something that's really fun to do um, we have the farmer's market which I just went to the, for the first time um, like last month or last two months ago. Um, and that was something that was really cool because it's all local businesses from North Bay and area. Um, we have the outdoor rinks. We have the Midway that comes to town. Um, I think it comes to town two times a year, but my favorite one is during, like, I'm pretty sure it's August because it's like a bunch of carnival rides. Um, we have a place called Duchenne Falls. It's just right off the highway. Um, if you like hiking, that's a really good place to go. There's some waterfalls that you get to see. There's trails that you'll be able to follow so you won't get lost. Um, and I was going to say North Bay Museum. And then my last one I would have to say is Out Loud North Bay. Um, it's a really inclusive space for students to go. Um, and Aaron and CSC have been working to create, <laughs> see Aaron's excited, um, Aaron and CSC have been working to create um, college nights just last week. We ended up watching The Grinch. Um, there were some giveaways and some free popcorn and drinks. Um, and then the Davidi Club, if you like home-cooked meals, um, they're called Mama Davidi's like frozen meals. Um, and it's like really good Italian food. Just wanted to add those. That's awesome. Uh, Noah, anything you would identify? Um, I think everyone, now that I'm, you know, going last, got most of the ideas out of the way. Um, one of my favorite things, and I feel it's like one of the most Canadian things you can do in North Bay, is, uh, I forget which month it is in, but there's snowmobile races on uh, Lake Nipissing when it's all frozen over. So everyone drives their cars right out to the lake, they have it all plowed out, and then people race their snowmobiles down the lake. And it's so cool. There's usually a couple like chip trucks and stuff like that that are out there. And it's just super cool. I feel like it's like one of the most Canadian things you can do in North Bay. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I think too, just as a, a fair warning, we are a bit of a hub for snowmobilers in the province of Ontario. So a lot of people will come up north in uh, in January, February, March and do a lot of snowmobiling. So if you like snowmobiling, it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, the other thing I just, it got mentioned in the chat, ice fishing. It's a huge element 
uh, here in North Bay. So there'll be like a little city <laughs> of ice huts uh, where people are, are doing ice fishing in the winter. Yeah, Noah. Yeah, just one more quick one. Yeah. Um, just down the highway a little bit towards Toronto. I don't know which direction that is. Um, south. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, south. Um, there is, uh, I think it's Matthew's Maple Syrup. Mm. Um, that's a really fun place to go. You can get on your horse carriage, take a tour of the maple syrup farm, buy some fresh maple syrup, see how they make it. It's, uh, it's a fun place to go. Yeah, definitely is. And, uh, actually I just watched a documentary on maple syrup. It was kind of funny because they were talking about how this Canadian theft of maple syrup was like this terrible thing. And I'm thinking this is a joke, right? <laughs> but they were Canada. So let's own it. Um, so with that said, I will I would go back. like to add, oh, sure, I would sure. like. I would like to ask that because for international students, if you would like to do snowmobiling and ice fishing, for snowmobiling, you will need a driving license and you would need like, I believe it's a trail pass for roads. Um, and for ice fishing, you also need um, a fishing license. Yes, so there would be extra work um, there to do yeah, it, yeah, and for sure. We're only three hours away from Toronto, so if you find that you already done everything in North Bay, you can actually go to Toronto and enjoy everything there. Really close, three hours, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that just by saying, three hours seems like a long time, but the highway is not a busy highway. It's busy in the summers because we get a lot of cottagers or people that vacation in the north, but in terms of uh, every other time during the school year, it's a pretty easy drive. It's all a four lane highway. So if you want to do a road trip, it's not that hard to get there and uh, is a very kind of comfortable experience. So at any rate, uh, if that's something you're interested in doing, you certainly can. So getting back to the questions that we had, um, the question that uh, we're on now is, can you work and go to school part-time? So we'll go back to our students, Noah. Um, yeah, you can. Sam and I uh, both work two part-time jobs on top of our full-time studies, um, and we both maintain pretty good grades, but it also depends on which program you're in. I know some programs, for example, uh, like aircraft maintenance, is very intense for the like workload for school. Um, so the amount of spare time you have for um, for working outside of school is very diminished, but um, Sam and I both work around 35 hours a week on top of our full-time studies and um, we maintain good grades and it's not that big of an issue for us. Perfect, thank you, Noah. Sam? Um, yeah, so I think the biggest thing is knowing time management skills, um, which is something that I know a lot of students tend to struggle with when they first come to school. Um, so, oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, making sure that you're really um, paying attention to your schedule, make sure you have all your assignments, um, like you have a list of when your assignments are due. Um, and then I think another thing that's important to know is there's a lot of employment opportunities for students on campus. Um, pretty much any department that you're interested in being a part of, you can, there's possibility to find a job. I know that there's first, um, the First People Center has job openings. There's the food bank that you can help work at. Um, Sport and Wellness has a lot of students on board with them. Um, yeah, stuff like that. That's awesome. Yes. No, definitely. There are uh, student positions that are designed essentially so that you're working 10 hours a week. So it's not so much that you're distracted in your studies, but it's enough that you're making an income. So definitely uh, good points by both of you. So the next question we've got is what happens if you miss a class or are late showing up? I, uh, I can kick it off. Sure. So um, it depends on your program again. Uh, it's some programs have uh, our requirements for you to get uh, licenses um, and things like that. But if your program doesn't, my experience is that um, you are paying for this education. Um, so if you choose not to show up, um, that's on you. If you choose to throw your education away, that's on you. Um, the fact is that we're, you know, you're adults at this point. Um, so you will face the consequences of, of missing class. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I think, for me at least. That's a very good point. Sam? 
Um, just want to step in there. Just hearing what Noah said, I feel like if you're a first time student, that can sound a little bit scary. So maybe you want to um, lighten the load there. Um, so for me, my program requires, I think it's a 70% attendance. Um, so there is some leeway if you need to miss classes, but don't just say like, oh, I went drinking last night and I'm hungover, so I'm going to miss class. Like, obviously, if you're throwing up, then you can't be in the classroom. Um, but really just making sure that you're going to a, all of your classes, because a lot of the time you're going to miss really important discussions that happen, um, especially because I know in my program, our teachers like to go off in tangents that are super helpful to our learning. Um, and the lectures aren't recorded, so that's really important information that you're missing out on. Um, and if there is an issue happening and you're seeing that you're kind of falling behind, then go to Student Success Services and say, hey, I need a little bit of help here. Um, and there's a lot of support for students there. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say, too, and it's kind of grabbing from Noah and grabbing from you, Sam, is that you're an adult. So it's your choice as to whether or not you go or not. Now, for me, it was, yeah, you're making an investment. But at the end of the day, if you want to go, great. If you you know, miss a class, that's also fine. You have to do what works for you. So whatever that looks like, uh, hopefully that means attending enough classes um, that you're getting the necessary information that you've signed up to receive. Um, but again, you're an adult. So it's, it's your choice at that point. Okay, so the next question we've got is, uh, what is better, living in residence or off-campus housing? I'll start. Sure. Um, so I personally have never lived on residence because I was lucky enough to have my parents in town. Um, but I feel like I was kind of at a disadvantage personally. Um, well, personally, um, because when you're living on residence, you're in a whole building with a bunch of other students and you you have roommates. So you're having that connection um, to students that you wouldn't necessarily be talking to because you're not necessarily placed with people in your program. Mm -hmm. They do not uh, like a questionnaire, I think, and then they decide who you're matched with. I know you can request people that you wanna stay with, um, but if you have the funds to do it, I would suggest living on residence um, because it includes your cable, your Wi-Fi, your hydro, your electricity, all that fun stuff. And when you're living off campus, you have to pay for those bills separately a lot of the time. Um, and you have a lot more security, I find, when you're living in residence because um, there's key fobs to get in. Um, so if you have the funds, I would suggest going for it. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Awesome. Yeah. Good answer. Noah, anything to add? Um, yeah, my situation was pretty well the same. Uh, I had my parents in town, so I opted to um, live at home instead of residence. Um, but one thing I will say is that in high school, um, I knew a bunch of people, very friendly, social guy, um, lots of friends. And then uh, because my first year was online and I wasn't in residence, um, I didn't meet like anyone at all. So by far and away, if I were to do it again, I would probably choose to live in residence my just my first year um, to meet as many people as I could. Um, and then my second year, I'd you know, reconsider if I wanted to stay there or not. But definitely, if your first year, I'd recommend going into residence, especially if your program is, um, is online. It's very hard to meet people in a completely online setting. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Noah. The thing I'll add is, um, as, uh, as a liaison officer, I talk about this all the time, but uh, I can't say enough about our residents. So it's not overly expensive. You're looking at just under $1,000 a month when you break it down uh, over the eight months, but it is a phenomenal facility. So compared to, I've stayed in three separate residence uh, facilities at four different schools that I went to in my experience. And yeah, the, the kind of our residence by far is a much uh, better facility. You get a full kitchen, you get a single bedroom. Uh, if you are um, a domestic student, you're living with another student, one singular other student. So it's definitely a good social aspect. Um, if you are international, they typically will put you in a four person uh, unit. So you still get your own bedroom, but you just have an extra person. So the social element is definitely there. But in terms of the, um, the uh, residence facility as it stands, it's like a hotel. 
So it's much nicer than many, 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 if not all other residence facilities that at least I'm aware of. And so that provides a really good value for you as a student. You are guaranteed your first year in residence. So that's another benefit for you. So definitely apply, even if you don't know what you're gonna do yet, it's still worth applying because then at least you'll get an idea of if you're able to stay in residence or not. We do have a lot of different rentals in North Bay as well. But as a new student, if you're not from North Bay, uh, which as we've kind of figured out, many of you are not, it can be a, a really nice kind of kickstart to social aspects. And I'll just mention another quick element is that if you are staying in residence, you've also got Nipissing University residences right nearby as well. So you're not just kind of close to your other Canada or colleagues, you've also got Nipissing students in their own facilities right beside you. So it's another win-win for you as a student. So uh, that's enough for me, but I just wanted to make that very clear. So the fast, last, I should say, and final question is, if you could only give students one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I would say the most important thing, um, for college students to get good at is uh, is time management. Um, in my experience, at least, um, it is uh, very different from high school in the way that um, there's a lot more assignments that are smaller, um, and it's a lot easier to get lost uh, in the assignments. Um, so keeping organized um, and making sure that you're getting your assignments done on time um, is far and away the best advice I can I can offer. Um, I personally use checklists. Um, I know Sam organizes her semester per week with checklists. Um, the, the assignments are generally uh, a little bit easier in my experience, but there's more of them, like I said. So just keeping on top of those and making sure that you're not forgetting about them or getting lost in a pile of, assi of assignments because you didn't do them for two weeks in a row and then all of a sudden you have 10 assignments in a week and you're freaking out. So time management, far and away the best advice I can give. It's a good point, Noah. I think organization becomes a bigger deal now. And so even though, like you said, it, the difficulty of whatever quiz may not be as difficult as uh, other exam that you did previously, um, being organized is a, is a central important uh, skill to develop. Samantha, anything you wanted to add? Um, yeah, I feel like just one piece of advice is so hard to decide, um, <laughs> but I think my biggest thing, because I'm really hard on myself when it comes to school, is grades are not everything. Um, most programs have, I think it's a 70% average that you need to graduate. So if you're, because in high school, um, you, what? 60%, a lot of programs, sorry. Um, and in high school, I know to be able to get accepted to college, you had to have a specific um, range of grades that you needed to hit to get accepted. Um, but when you're out in the workforce with your diploma, your employer isn't going to say, hey, what grade did you get in your introduction to sociology? Um, so as long as you're hitting those grade requirements, you're going to graduate and you're going to be able to find a job. So if you're not exactly where you want to be, then reach out um, for tutor help. I know I keep saying to reach out, but the supports are there, so use them. Um, make sure you're getting the help that you need. But other than that, like grades aren't, you're not gonna die <laughs> if you're not getting 90s and straight A's because your grades don't matter once you're in the workforce. Yeah, we have a tendency in, uh, in North America anyway to think we need to be the absolute best you're already on the absolute best. You know, it, it, nobody's looking at your marks um, to consider you either a success or a failure. It's just something we put on ourselves. So try to not um, do that because you'll just worry yourself sick and there's really no value in doing that. So that ends the 10 questions. So we'll open it up now for any questions that people might have, uh, generally speaking, if you have any. And uh, so we use the Q&A feature and we will do our best to answer them.